There's a lot of ways to go get a grizzly. And I'm interested in only a couple of those. And the ones I am interested in all have to do with this, this topography, this kind of challenge, this kind of landscape. When I do get mine, it's going to be this kind of struggle with Mother Nature. I'm Steven Ranella. To me, hunting isn't only about the pursuit of an animal. It's about who we are and what we're made of. I live to hunt and hunt to live. I am a meat eater. This trip up here started two years ago when my friend Ryan Callahan and I entered this basin right here and we were just blown away by how beautiful this place was. It's a true chunk of wilderness. Like by any definition, you're in the wilderness. Since we busted up here, one of the main things I've thought about in life is just like coming back up here and seeing the rest of this stuff. People love a triumphant return story. So you could forgive me for thinking that it'd be a good idea for my friend Ryan Callahan and I to head out on a hunt for boar grizzlies in the same isolated British Columbia mountain range where we were unable to find one the last time we looked. Is it good to be back yet or no? I never quit thinking about this place. On that trip, we had adventures aplenty, mountain goats, black bears everywhere, sightings of rare woodland caribou, and more than a handful of sow grizzlies, including one that charged us at close range. Hey, Mom! Hey, Mom! Heck, 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 heck. And while we developed a deep love for the mysteries and unseen basins of this mountain range, the big boar grizzly of my dreams was nowhere to be seen. We spent a week tromping around, and we just couldn't even begin to scratch the surface of what's here. But this time around, we changed things up a little bit by bringing on a guide and wrangler named Aaron Evans from Primitive Outfitters to haul us in with plenty of food and gear. With him, we can explore the full depth and length of this range, unraveling those mysteries of the landscape and hopefully finding that mythic giant bear. There's a hundred things that could go wrong. To rattle off a few of the top ones would be you just get fog banked in. You got the risk of just getting a dump of snow and having that really drag you down. And then just typical seasonal stuff, you know. But the nice thing is we got enough time to just let things play out in this natural rhythm. I'll tell you what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a, what's obviously a boar grizzly, but I don't care if he's humongous. I really don't care, no. We got something right here. What is it, a grizz? He spook? No, no, it's there. Everybody just hold it still, man. That's a bar too, isn't it? He's going wild charge. My inexperience as a grizzly hunter is betrayed by the fact that I always think I'm seeing a boar whenever I find a new bear. It's letting your desires have more say than your eyeballs. What's that? I'm 90% sure that's a female. Are you serious? Girly feelings of that bear. 
know, I've, I've always heard that, the, you know, like when they turn and you see their ass, males tend to just kind of have like that ass that just drops off. When you look at the butt on that, it definitely has more of a distinct slope. You know, that's the problem I have when I like talk about the, like the grizzly I'd like to get, is I want to get a male. And wanting to know you're absolutely looking at a male tends to rule out a lot of bears in the middle ground that you're never going to know. Bears of this size are notoriously hard to identify, but Aaron is virtually certain this one is a sow. That is one of the most gorgeous bears, man. The thing that puzzles me about bears and bear hunting is like when I see a bear, rather than having your desire go up, my desire starts trickling down. My primary passion as a hunter is what's known as spot and stalk hunting. Get up on a high perch somewhere in open country, spot your critter from way off, then put a stalk on it. It requires patience and high energy in equal measure, but to do it right you need visibility and we're getting none of it. The fog is so thick you can stir it with a spoon. While it's frustrating enough that it messes up hunting, it also messes up something that I like just as much as hunting, watching grizzly bears. Well, we've had all kinds of weather today. We had snow, sleet, rain, fog. We're getting it all. No hail yet. Like you guide a lot of grizzly hunts, but have you ever, do you ever hunt grizzlies on your own? Yeah, when I draw tags. But I'm looking for that one bear. Mm -hmm. You know, I want one that the toes are curled in when he walks. I want that awe-inspiring giant. Giant. Have you seen, like, I know guiding you've got some giants, but have you hunting on your own seen some of the ones you'd like to When get? I don't have a tag in my pocket? Oh, yeah, all the time. But as soon as I put a tag in my pocket, okay. I have not yet seen the bear with a tag in my pocket. See, and I love, Grizzly Garden is one of my favorite hunts. Really? Yeah. Because you can just sit in the fog and... <laughs> There's three caribou, a big bull. It's two cows and a bull, or... It doesn't make me think there's a big grizzly bear on that ridge right now, but that's the first sign of life today. Got to start somewhere. There's a black bear. You got a black bear? Yeah. Big old butt on it. And he's running. Let's just caught our wind down there. A reason for hope is that when the fog does lift for 10 or 30 minutes, we see game, but it's just not long enough. Like catching a glimpse of a skinny dipper vanishing into a lake at night, the brief sighting only makes you more aware of what you never saw. Yeah, this weather, you get this like constant battle of like, oh, is my glass in focus? Is it, is my breath fogging it up? Or is it just... No, it's just the ceiling is dropped. <laughs> yeah, I just can't see through the fog. We should just say that we're looking for dry wood, and maybe we'll run into some game. Because tomorrow's supposed to be the real crappy day. Tomorrow's the rain day? Yeah. I am getting mad at the fog, man. I didn't think it would happen, but it's happening. Take a swing at <laughs> We try to outsmart the fog by getting below it, but that puts us too far down into the thick timber. 
about as useful for finding mountain grizz as fog is. So many mornings and afternoons, and sometimes whole days, are spent under a tarp in the rain and fog, waiting uncomfortably. You know what I kind of hope Cal Annex would be cool is if, um, because we've hunted grizzlies together a couple times, if you wound up getting killed by a grizzly on this trip. Mm -hmm. Then later I came back up to this spot and got that one that got, yeah, that'd be real meaningful to me. In my mind, he'd be missing some toes. <laughs> There'd be some definitive scar. Yeah, I'd, I'd hope so I'd he'd be like, it. there's the one that got Callahan. He's a good guy. I wouldn't change a thing about that story, but it is sad to have lost Callahan. After days and days of this, it's only natural that a fella will get a little frustrated. got all of what a 20 second 10 second glimpse in them there yeah. two days ago two 10 second two five second glimpse yeah was that two days ago or three days ago now i don't even know yeah i don't it wasn't yesterday two days every time you enter the fog you come and do a time warp <laughs> don't be stealing my book idea <laughs> Counting the day we came up, we've spent a full week in the fog. Finally, today, it looks like we may be able to see something. We're fired up to cover ground, if for no other reason than to simply check out some new country. What would be cool is we'll be able to, we, we might cut tracks. Head east, right? Let's head the opposite direction that you'd think we should be heading right now, up. <laughs> Even beside that, like we're getting opportunities to glass out valleys, and um, even no one wants to say the obvious, which is um, just not seeing a ton of bears up here. I haven't had to think about this too much yet because we came up here with a ton of time. But if things stay like they are, and we're only getting an hour of glassing in every day, we might not find what we're after. I'm chasing that one grizzly. I might like, chase it till the day I die. But it's not all doom and gloom. On our way along a ridge top, we cut the tracks of a flock of ptarmigan and quickly followed them down. I've been toting a collapsible air rifle for this occasion, but it lacks the necessary oomph to get the job done quick. You hit it. Yeah, you hit him in the shoulder. Yeah, I see it needs a little more crack to it. <laughs> well, that made my day so far, so. <laughs> what are you allowed, 10 of these day? We're almost there. <laughs> Oh boy's liver tonight. These birds are an exciting change from our diet of freeze-dried food. We've got a cup of bacon grease for poaching the legs, gizzards, and hearts, and for basting the breasts on skewers over an open fire. Thank you. It smells good. It's probably gonna be good. It's made with your um, your homegrown, home cured bacon mm, I fat. Can man. Taste the smoke, yeah. You, you recognize the you recognize the bacon. I got the flavor, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get the last leg. You guys can grab a brass. It's actually one of my favorite. Is it's got flavor to it. Why we only got two, I do not know. We were distracted by shooting something that weighs. 900 times more than that or so.
There's tracks going up this way. Look at this print, Steve. That's a big bear. Was he in here between snows? Because look at this rock. What are you looking at? Well, it's just like there's a bunch of crust and snow under the rock. Okay. Is there tracks leaving? Oh, yeah, there is, eh? Yeah. Good sized bear, too. Yeah, man, for sure. Yeah, it's between snow. It's probably last night. Dang. We're good? Yeah. Good, good. Let's go find this guy. Yes. Yeah, we'll just go to the next valley and check it, and so on and so forth. This is the sunniest weather we've had for a while, so we'll give it 10 minutes. If we don't catch nothing, we're going to move. I like that idea. Yeah. I, I just, you're going to see it's going to stand out like a sore thumb right now. Not long after cutting these grizz tracks, we find a sow with a pair of two-year-old cubs. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, two, three. Sow and a couple of big cubs. Big? Big cubs. Holy cow. Yeah, they're big. Not the lone boar I'm looking for, but it's feeling like a grizz kind of day. Another bear? Grizz. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, good bear. I got to see that thing through a scope. That's a good bear. See, now that's a grizz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right where it's supposed to be. He's got a good, good looking noggin on him. Yeah, good silver shoulders. I mean, just from what I saw, it's kind of got that. There it is. Cock of the walk attitude. Uh, it's got the little bit blunter nose on it, though. Yeah, I see that. But it's got wide shoulders, though, too. You know? Yeah. Got a big ass on it. Yeah. Well, it's definitely got a blunter nose. It's not an older bear. I mean, we could knock off six, 700 yards relatively. Oh, easy. We could go over to that ridge right there and yeah. sit on that ridge. Yeah, let's do that. We'd be a hell of a lot closer. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just hoping it's not humping up in front of us and we're going to jump it. Aaron and I head out to gain some distance on the bear while Ryan stays behind to keep an eye on it with his spotting scope. While we haul ass, the bear heads down one valley, up a mountain, and over a ridge, out of sight. Now, I heard a lot of people say, unless they're quartering to you or across, like there's no, there's no point going after or going the other direction. You know what, I've heard that too, but like I've had a bear drop over and disappear, and we got on it again. Oh, yeah, like, I mean, it could just be sitting over the next rise. Here's Cal. But I could see see it running back and forth on the ridge too. Oh, up on the skyline? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, why don't we just side hill around and up? Well, we don't know what's on the other side yet, so. Good things. That's what's on the other side. Hey. Lots of good things. Hey. By the time we make it up the ridge, the bear has disappeared into oblivion just the kind of thing that makes me love these bears and these mountains so much. He disappeared right here. But that was 20, 30 minutes ago that he came through here. Now, man, these guys just utilize their space in a huge way. They're out there going, going, going. You know, coming on this trip, we had these two parallel goals. It was getting a grizzly and or we would cover this range out to the end. Uh, this is the highest we've been and the furthest we've seen. And it's the it's dunk. So there's no more wondering. You know, at least for me, there's no more wondering about what's over there. I was planning on never, ever stepping foot on this mountain range ever again. Now I don't know. They still don't know what it would feel like to walk up on a dead grizzly. 
would I be like, oh man, what did you do? Yeah, what did I do? I realized that all the time I've spent cursing this weather was unwarranted. I thought it was keeping me from bears, but now I see that the bears and the weather are one and the same. Together, they don't give you what you want. They drive you nuts, they test you. They find out if you really can hack it, if you're as tough as you think you are, or if you're just another thing that's defeatable, a tree that gets uprooted by the wind, a boulder brushed aside by a paw. Do you realize that it's sunny and snowing right now? It's just, just British Columbia. <laughs>